So what I'm going to do is just kind of step through each one of these checks and go over the code for how this is done. So the first one is we're checking to see if the validate math function returns true or false. Now you'll notice with this function that I'm passing in the post human. So if we go to our form, you'll notice that the this check right here, this are you human, this math check, the name of it is human. So that's where we're getting that. So I'm passing that in here and then I'm I'm setting what the answer is supposed to be. So the answer is supposed to be seven, five plus two equals seven. So they should enter seven here. So I'm passing in both the value that was actually submitted and what the answer is supposed to be here for this validate math check. And if it doesn't check out, then I'm returning a status of zero and a message that says your math is suspect. And so that's what we get when we enter this and there's no, the math check is wrong. All right, so let, then let's go ahead and go down and look at this actual function, this validate math function. So if we go down here, here's that function that I wrote and called validate math. You set in the value that was submitted and then the test what it's supposed to be. And we're just doing a simple if the value equals the test, then return true. Otherwise, return false. So a very, very simple check. Now, int val just essentially makes sure you get kind of the absolute value of this uh, here. So don't necessarily need to do that, but I had done that in the original one. I think there was a reason why, but um, it, so it just makes sure that, you know, it, it's it's the right type and all that stuff. Okay. So anyway, it's just a simple check. Does the value equal the, what was passed equal what it's supposed to? If it does return true, if not return false. So very straightforward check there. All right, so if that one passes, then you'll notice we don't, there's no else statement on here. We just allow the return. So the, this is the way I do this. I assume, uh, I, I, I check for all the negatives. So I recheck, basically all these checks are designed that if there's some sort of error, then we just return at that point. Okay, so return will end the processing of the script. If there's an error here, if the math doesn't add up, none of the, re the rest of this will process, okay? So it's basically a series of like roadblocks <laughs> that your code has to get through. And if it does, then we return true down here or we return a positive status down here. So that's the way I generally um, set up my scripts is to kind of be oriented toward the negative and be kind of designed so that they will, you know, they're, they're, they lean towards returning some sort of, um, uh, you know, negative response that way in order to get through, you're not having something submitted that isn't, you know, it's, it's, it's still submitting, even though there's some sort of error, I want to catch all of these errors. So that's maybe a different perspective and point of view, but that's just the way that I set it up. So anyway, you'll notice that we're returning. So this will stop at this point if there's some sort of error. It won't do anything else. Hopefully you're enjoying the course up to this point. Now, if you'd like to keep going and finish it off, all my courses are available on Skillshare. And not only will you get access to all of my courses, but over 20,000 others on web design and web development, freelancing, graphic design, online marketing, and more. And it's all for just 10 bucks a month. And as a teacher on Skillshare, I can give you a two month free trial. You'll get full access to the entire library of courses and you can cancel at any time before the trial is up and you'll never be charged a penny. To learn more and to start your two month free trial, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare.